Hey, this is Mass 6, unit 7, less than 11 points on the coordinate plane. So first of all, it says choose a horizontal or a vertical line on the grid. So again, horizontal is going to go this direction, and vertical is going to go this direction. And you just get to pick which one you want to use. For me, I'm going to go ahead and just choose this horizontal line right there as an example for today. Okay? So it says to draw four points on the line and label each point with its coordinates. So I could pick a point here, and here, and here, and out here. When we label the coordinates, we're going to go ahead and label the x value first, with a comma, and then the y value like so. So in this case, I can look at the x value, which is these numbers here. These are my y values here. The x value here is a 2, comma, and my y value is a 4. For here, my x value is a 5 comma, and my y value, because it's in the same horizontal line, is still 4. Here my x value is 9, my y value is 4, and here my x value is 14, and my y value is 4. Tell your partner whether your line is horizontal or vertical, and have your partner guess the locations of your points by naming coordinates. So each partner should have four coordinates on the plane, and what you're going to be doing is just working with a partner, have them guess whether it's horizontal or vertical, and then if you guess, if the guess is correct, you're going to put an X to the point. If your partner guessed a missed point is on your line, but not the point that you plotted, say the point's on my line, but it's not one of my points. So for example, let's say I'm your partner, and you guessed, uh, you guessed 12 comma 4, okay? I would put a, you could put a mark there and say, yeah, okay, that's going to be a correct point, but it's not on the line. That's going to at least tell you where the line is going to be at. So 12.4 is a correct point, but it's not the one I'm looking for, correct on the line, but not the right point. So you would say that is on my line, but it's not one of my points. After that, the other person takes turns, and they're going to guess too. Everybody gets three guesses per turn, and the goal here is to see if you can find the points that your partner chose, whether it's on a horizontal line or a vertical line. So as you do this, don't tell your partner what your points are. Just let it be a secret and let them guess three guesses at a time until someone's able to select them all the right way. All right, let's take a look at the next activity once you're done with that little game. All right, this next activity we have a court, what's called a coordinate plane. It's called a coordinate plane because we have lots of coordinates all over here in this whole spaced out area. Okay, and it says to label each point on the coordinate plane with an ordered pair. Again, that ordered pair is an x comma y value that we're talking about. So my x line is here, and my y is this vertical, my values. So I look at the first one, point A. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say that this A is located at the x value of 3, and the y value is up here at 4. So we can write that as 3 comma 4. When I look at B, the x value is on this line again, is at negative 4, and the x value is here at positive 2. For C, I'm over here, the x value is negative 5, and the y value is negative 3. And for D, my x value is at 4, and my y value is at negative 2. What do you notice about the locations and ordered pairs of B, C, and D, and how are they different from point A? So you notice point A is at 3, 4, but B, C, and D are negative 4, 2, they are negative 5, negative 3, and they are 4, negative 2. What's the difference you see between this ordered pair and these three ordered pairs? Well, hopefully the thing you're noticing is that B and C and D all have at least one negative number in the ordered pair, whereas A are two positive numbers. Plot the point negative 2 comma 5 and label it point E, and then plot another point 3 comma negative 4.5 and label it F. Okay, so we can do that there. So what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and plot that out. So negative 2 comma 5, that means go to negative 2 and up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we'll plot that there, and we're going to label that E, and next one we're going to go over 3, 1, 2, 3, and then down 4.5, so there's 4, and 0.5 means halfway through, 
Oops, didn't quite make the line there, sorry. And that's going to be point F right there. Now the coordinate plane is divided into four quadrants. Quadrant one, two, three, and four. And these, of course, we call these Roman numerals, right? So you're not going to write down one and number two. You write one and two and three and four, as shown here. We start here on the positive side, the positive, positive side. That's going to be our quadrant one. And then we'll move this way where we have a negative comma positive y value. That's quadrant two. So we go counterclockwise when you're counting, starting with quadrant one. It's kind of how you might want to remember that there. So if G is at five comma two. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and we'll go up to one, two. Plot a point there, and that's G. In which quadrant is G located in? Well, G is located in quadrant one. H is at negative one, and then down five. One, two, three, four, five. So H is right here which puts it in quadrant one, two, three, okay, like so. And then I is in seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going down four, one, two, three, four. And there's I, and I is in quadrant four. A point has a positive Y coordinate, in which coordinate could it be? So for which values is y positive? Well, y is positive in all of these values there, which means that it could be in quadrant one or it could be in quadrant two. Both would be possible because that's where y is positive. Everything below the x-axis has y as being a negative value there. All right, let's look at the next activity. Here's an image of an archery target on a coordinate plane. The scores for landing um, an arrow in the colored regions are shown. All right, so we have 10 points if you're on yellow, eight for red, six there, four there, and two there. Name the coordinates for a possible landing point to score six points. So what we wanna do here is just plot a point somewhere in that right color. So six is blue, and so you can really pick any place you want. Here's a blue point right there. And so that coordinate for that one is going to be located at negative 2 comma negative 5. Now are there other options? Sure there are, right? There's a point here, a point there. There are many other blue points you could choose from. All right, how about 10 points? Well, 10 points going to be in the middle. So 10 points in the yellow. So there's one at negative 5 comma negative 4. That works. Which one gets two points? That's in the white. So find a place in the white that you like. Put it there, or negative nine, comma, negative five. Again, there are other options, these are just some. No points could be anywhere. I could pick a point right there where I missed it completely at two, comma, negative two. Four points is green, so I can put a green spot there, maybe go right there, go negative six, comma, negative one. And eight points is the red one, we could put one here, sure, negative three, comma, negative four. All right, and that's the idea there. Just plotting some points that seem to make sense on the grid and getting used to your x comma your y on the coordinates there. Understand these are the x values, those are the y values, and our coordinate grid has one, two, three, four quadrants as well. So that's kind of today's main lesson. Let's take a look at your summary. I'm going to work on some homework says just as the number line can be extended to the left to include negative numbers, right? The x and y axis of the coordinate plane can also be extended to include negative values. So our y can go down as well. So we can have negative y values and of course negative x values. Those all make sense. The ordered pair x, y can have a negative x and y values. For b, for example, negative 4 comma 1. The x value of negative 4 tells us the point is 4 units to the left of the y axis. The y value of one tells us if one point, uh, one unit above the x-axis. So that's kind of the idea there. You can see how that works. Again, looking at today, we have the coordinate or the um, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. You can leave them like that, or you could write them like Roman numerals like so. It doesn't make a big difference. Okay, just kind of know how all those things work. All right, take a moment to work on your homework. I'm gonna pause here and let you come back in a minute to check it out.
All right, let's do some homework here. It says graph these points in a coordinate plane, and we have them listed here. Now, I don't have a coordinate plane with me today, so I'm going to just draw a coordinate plane like so. I'm going to make one, two, three, one, two, three. I'm going to go up one, two, three, and one, two, three. So we have negative two comma three, so we're going to go over two and up one, two, three there. We're going to go positive two, positive three, one, two, three, right there. Negative two and down, one, two, three, so there. And then positive two and down three, so about there. So let's graph those points, so they're there graphed, no problem. And connect all the points and describe the figure. So when I connect these points, it looks like this, to this, to this, to this. So maybe you'd call that a square, maybe a rectangle, whatever you want to call that. Depends on how nicely yours is done. Number two, write the coordinates of each point. So we'll take a look here. Notice though that this coordinate grid counts by two. So the lines are two units apart. So when you look at A, A is here. We'd probably say that's at one comma. And how far up on the Y axis we go? What's well, at zero? So one comma zero. Over here, we went how far on the x-axis? We're at zero for our x, but our y value is negative one, negative two, negative three for that one there. Over here, we're gonna go over negative three to this point, and then we're gonna go down, look like negative five. So we say negative three comma negative five right there. For c, we're going all the way over to negative six, and we're gonna look over here, we're up here at five right there. And this one, we're at negative one. And we're at four for the y value, negative one comma four. So the tricky part on this was that they gave you a, a grid paper that just went ahead and went by twos instead of by ones. It probably would have been a little nicer if it went by ones, but that's okay, you can figure that out. Number three, these three points form a horizontal line. Negative 3.5 comma four, zero comma four, and 6.2 comma four. Name two additional points that fall on this line. So while it's on a horizontal line, what makes it a horizontal line is they have the same y value, right? Four, four, four. So if you were to plot it like this, one, two, three, four, we're looking for anything that goes right along there. That's the idea, okay? So that becomes our four y value. So any point is gonna be any x value any x value and as long as the y value is 4 you're gonna have a point that is on that line so you just want to pick two additional points instead of the letter x and that's what you want to do there number four this is one night it is 24 degrees Celsius warmer in Tucson than it was in Minneapolis so 24 so the difference between Tucson and Minneapolis is 24 degrees Celsius now if the temperatures in Tucson and Minneapolis are opposites what is the temperature in Tucson? Let's think about what it means when it says opposite, right? So the opposite, if I have negative two degrees compared to two degrees, those are gonna be opposites, right? That's what they're talking about. So, but the difference between negative two and two, here's zero, here's one, here's negative two and two, the difference here is one, two, three, four, right? That's a difference there. In this case, the difference is, is 24 degrees warmer in one than the other. So here to here, the difference between Tucson, Tucson and Minneapolis from here to here is 24 degrees. That's 24 degrees warmer. That's the difference there. But these are opposite numbers. So what two numbers can you have where the difference is going to be 24? In this case, the difference between 2 and 2 was 4, meaning that the absolute value of negative 2 plus 2 is going to be our difference. In this case here, the absolute value of some number plus, right, some the same number but not negative is going to be equal to 24. That's kind of what you're thinking about here. So if you put negative 24 there, okay, uh, would you say that's going to work? Mm, no, that's not going to work there, okay. And the reason for that is we're looking at the temperature in Tucson. Tucson's going to be warmer, needs to be positive for us to work out. So the negative ones are not going to work for us right away. Okay, so I'm looking at 12 and 24. If I had the opposite, negative 24 plus 24, that's going to be 24 plus 24, which is equals 48. That's not a 48 degrees warmer. That's a, sorry, that's 48 degrees warmer, not 24 degrees warmer. That's too much. If I use 12, 
if I'm at negative 12 on a number line compared to positive 12 over here, the difference from here to here is going to be 24 degrees more, and those indeed are opposite numbers. So that one makes the most sense for number four. Number five. Noah is helping the band sell boxes of chocolate to fund a field trip. Each box contains 20 bars, and each bar sells for $1.50. All right, way to go. Complete the value table for values of M. So when he sells 20 bars, he makes $1.50, all right, per bar. So 0, 2 times 0 is 0, 10, and 3, 2 decimals, 2 decimals. So what's happening here is that it's costing him $30 or pay, making $30 for one box. When he sells 20 bars, he makes $1.50 per bar for one box. $1.50 times 20 is going to be $30. He'll collect $30 for one box sold. Which means now, if I sell two, I double this. 30 times 2 is 60. 30 times 3 is 90. 30 times 4 boxes is 120. 30 times 5 boxes is 150, 3 times 6 is 180, 3 times 7 is 210, and 30 times 8 is 240. Write an equation for the amount of money, M, that would be collected if B boxes of chocolate bars are sold. Okay, So the M is how much will be collected if this is done. Okay, So if this is done, you'll get that. Okay. So if you sell B boxes, oh, that's a funny B. So what's the value of M? That's your, that's your dependent, right? So how much money depends on how many I sell? That's going to be boxes times 30, or 30B, right? The boxes times $30, you can see how much I get there. Now what if, write an equation for the number of boxes if M dollars were collected? So the other way around. So we want to move the 30 over there. So that becomes m divided by 30 equals b, right? Just sliding it around. Same numbers, just a different way of thinking about it. Different way to set that equation. Number six, Lynn ran 29 meters in 10 seconds. She ran at a constant speed. How far did she run every second? So what is that? That's 29 divided by 10 seconds, which becomes 2.9 meters per second. Way to go. All right, simple enough there. And the next question on the back side said, how far can she run in one minute? Well, if she can run 2.9 meters in a second, there are 60 seconds in a minute. So we would say 4, 5, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, with one decimal there, she can go 174 meters in one, uh, one minute. And there you go. And that's the answer to the backside. That's it for today. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.